This is a lesson on the musculoskeletal system. So what are the functions of the musculoskeletal system? Number one, it gives us our shape and it also helps determine our size. It gives us support and it supports our muscles and our organs. It's there to protect our delicate organs. For example, our skull protects our brain and our ribs protect our lungs. It's there to allow us to move. So the skeleton actually allows that movement within our body. Blood cell production. Blood cells are made in the bone marrow. For the exam, you're going to need to know how to correctly label a bone. Here is a vertical section through to the bone. As you can see, at the top of the bone in front of you, there is cartilage. This is there to protect the bone. It's a tough film of cartilage around the bone that actually helps prevent friction and the bones rubbing down. A typical bone has a shaft and a compact bone, which is made of osteans. It provides a hard external layer to the bone. Inside is bone marrow, where the production of blood cells um, are made. Then we have this spongy part of the bone. It end, um, it's the ends of the bones that have thin, irregular sheets called trabeculae. As you can see now, we've got the transverse section of the bone. So this is as if we saw the bone in half. On the outer part of the bone, we can see the cement layer. And then there's the layers of hard bone. They're all there to protect the bone being easily broken. Then we have the Haversian canal, which is a central, which contains blood vessels and nerves. And then we have um, a tiny canal containing cytoplasmic um, processes of osteocytes. Um, and then we have spaces within the hard bone that contains the living osteocytes. Have a look at these. Try to um, realise the importance of the protective layer on the outside of the bone in order to make sure that it's not easily broken. Um, and how, as we go inside the bone, that the, the role of different um, parts of the bone. We're now moving on to the types of joints. The types of joints you need to know for your exam are the ball and socket, pivot, hinge, sliding or gliding, and the fixed joint. If you want to refresh your memory on the types of joints, it's suggested that you watch the YouTube clip that I've highlighted on this slide. The first joint that we will look at is the ball and socket joint. So the ball and socket joint is found in the hips and the shoulder. And as you can see from the diagram, it is like a ball that fits nicely into a socket shape. This joint allows the most amount of movement. So it allows movement away from the body, towards the body, allows you to go um, put your arms and legs forward, back. You're allowed to do full circles using this joint, although that will depend on how flexible you are. It will allow medial rotation, so rotating towards the body center, uh, rotation away from the body center. You don't need to know the long nine, uh, the long names on the left, such as abduction, adduction, flexion, and extension. They're, they're just there to give you an idea of the different types of uh, movement that the ball and socket joint allows. So we now move on to the pivot joint and as you can see from the diagram below it allows us to move our head from side to side and allows us to move our head towards our shoulders. There are only three pivot points in the human body, one in the neck at the base of the skull and one in each elbow. The pivot joint in the neck called the uh, Atlanto uh, axial, axial joint allows the head to rotate back and forth and from side to side. Then we have another joint that fits its name. So it's the hinge joint. It's found in the knee and the elbow. And it looks very much like a hinge you'd find on a door. Hinge joints are those that allow movement along one plane. They facilitate the bending and straightening actions of both your arms and your legs. The gliding joints, very much what it says on the uh, tin. So if you open and close your fingers or your spread, of feet, uh, spread apart your toes on your feet, this will allow some movement of bones in your hands and your feet. So examples of where it's found is in your wrist, ankle and in your vertebrae. We now moved on, move on to the fixed joints, which are joints where they don't move. Uh, hence the name, they are fixed in place. An example of a fixed joint is the skull and the pelvis. Um, the skull isn't originally fixed you have the plates allowing some movement for growth when um, when babies are born and they start to fuse around seven years old so here is a table just to explain it um, so you can revise from this table um, first of all it says the type of joint and examples of where it's found 
So we have the ball and socket joint, and that's found in the hips and the shoulder. The pivot joint, that's in, found in the neck. Um, the hinge, elbow and knee. Sliding and gliding joint is in the wrist and the ankle. And the fixed is in the cranium, which is the skull and the pelvis. It's worth five minutes to have a little look through this, to think about the name of the joint in the neck, the elbow, the hip, the wrist, the shoulder, the ankle, the knee, the cranium, which is the skull, and the pelvis. Have a couple of minutes, stop the PowerPoint, and try to answer these, and then check with your teacher. The next part of our exam, we're going to need to know about the synovial joints. So synovial joints are specialised joints which permit free movement. Now, the joint that we're looking at here is the knee joint. And there are components of the synovial joint that you need to be aware of. You're going to have to draw and label the diagram. This has appeared in the exam before, so you need to be aware of um, being able to label it accurately. Um, and the parts that you're going to need to label accurately is the muscle, bone, ligament, tendon, cartilage, synovial capsule and synovial fluid. Now, this sounds like straight away, like you might think, wow, there's just so much to label. But if you look at the diagram on the right, it's so easy to already go, right, I can see where the bone is and I can see where the muscle is. So then you really only need to learn the last five. But if you're fully aware that cartilage protects the end of bones, you can see where that goes right at the end of the bones there to prevent friction and rubbing and it stops the bones from um, shortening as you've uh, if you on, on if you use them daily if you imagine if the bones constantly um, rubbing against each other they'd get shorter and then you need to be aware of what ligaments are tendons and synovial capsule and synovial fluid so if we have a look there's a little area in between the bone um, and um, the cartilage where the fluid can be and that's synovial fluid not like a lubrication and that's another way the bones avoid any friction is there's a lubrication of fluid there and then we have the uh, tendon which attaches muscle to bone and then I don't think on this actual diagram there is a ligament but we do need to be aware of um, what a ligament is which I'll go into in a minute um, and then surrounding the synovial fluid is the synovial capsule where it's all stored so straight away you may look at that and go wow okay that's a lot to label but you can take off things very quickly yeah i know where the bone is i know where the muscle is right okay cartilage is at the end of the bones and obviously to help the friction to stop the stop it rubbing and being uh, and, and obviously moving smoothly there has to be some sort of fluid and some sort of lubrication so in between there will be the synovial fluid and surrounding that will be the capsule So as I've gone over on the previous slide, it's really important to understand the function of some of the components of a synovial joint. So first of all, we have muscle. Muscle we need to enable to, to, to allow us to have movement take place. So muscles work in pairs. One contracts, one relax. So it's like the bicep contracts, the um, tricep will relax. Um, and that allows for movement to take place. With the bone, it provides a framework and support for the attachment from, of muscles and other tissues. Ligament, it attaches a bone to another bone. It's really important to understand the difference between a ligament and a tendon. So a li ligament attaches bone to another bone and tendon attaches muscle to bone. And these are the ones that are commonly confused. Then we have cartilage and this reduces friction and absorbs the shock of the joint. So allowing us to move slowly, to run. Um, and then, as I said previously, um, the synovial fluid that lubricates and nourishes the joint. So if you don't have that synovial fluid, you are still going to have um, a certain amount of friction there. Then you have the synovial capsule and this secretes synovial fluid and maintains joint stability. And that surrounds the synovial fluid. For the next slide, it'd be, I think, beneficial for you to have a little look at the YouTube clip that I've included on the PowerPoint. You could look at it on my um, PowerPoint without my voiceover. That may be easier. Um, and I really want you to have a look about thinking about describing muscle action around a joint using the above key term. So um, skeletal systems are made up of muscles or fibres consisting of two types of protein that can slide past each other using energy supplied by ATP. The sliding makes the muscle fibres shorten, contracting the muscle, 
These proteins cannot slide back in the opposite direction to increase the muscle length again. Instead, they must be pulled out by the action of another muscle as it contracts. The original muscle is said to be in a state of relaxation. This means muscles can pull, but not push. It's really important to realize muscles can pull, but cannot push. Skeletal muscles therefore have to work in pairs that bring about opposite actions. So if we've got a dumbbell in our hand, um, and we have got our elbow in at our side and our, our hand and elbow, we've got a 90 degree angle at our elbow. If we were then to bring the bicep up to our shoulder, our bicep would be contracting and our tricep would be relaxing to allow the movement to take place. As we bring our wrist down with the dumbbell, the bicep would relax and the tricep would contract. And this allows movement to take place. Um, we can relate this to the elbow joints. I've said to raise the forearm, the biceps muscles contract. Uh, well, it's, it's called the antagonist and the triceps relax. Um, so this is just basically what I have discussed. Um, tendons allow muscles to operate at a distance from a bone. If you waggle your fingers, you'll observe the lines moving beneath your skin. These are tendons allowing your fingers to move. After a while, fatigue in your wrist will confirm that this is where the muscles operate in your fingers are located, not in your hand. Um, so have a little look. Think about what I've just said. Have a look at the book. Try to actually describe the muscle action around your joints. You can use page 108 of the revision guide to support you as well. I have managed to get some past exam questions um, and put them onto the PowerPoint. And I'd really appreciate it if you have a go at answering some of these questions. Um, it's about identifying the different types of joints found at each of the locations, the hip and the wrist. And I think that's fairly simple. I think you should easily be able to reel those off. Um, then the diagram below shows an elbow joint. And you've got to identify the structures that have been labelled. Now, some of these will be really easy. Others, you may need to actually use the book to help guide you and have a little think about what it is. Remember, though, that cartilage is always found at the end of the bones. Then the last question is about explaining how the forearm, forearm represented by the ulna and radius in the diagram on the previous slide, is raised and lowered. Now, I have just explained um, that fair, well in, in relation to a dumbbell, but you are going to need to talk about how the muscles work in pairs, um, about the contraction and relaxing and antagonistic pairs. So if you're still unaware of antagonistic pairs, please make sure you revise this.